Hello, hello. Um, in this video, we are going to work with terminating and repeating decimals. We're going to learn how to convert those to fractions and also how to convert fractions to those decimals. And then at the end, we're going to get into percents just the tiniest of bit because usually this leads right into your um, rational numbers unit with fractions. And also a lot of times it leads into your percent unit as well. So step number one, we're going to change a terminating decimal to a fraction. It would probably help if we knew what the word terminating meant for decimals, right? So I always think of it as the Terminator movies. The Terminator was about stopping someone, right? So in a terminating decimal, the decimal stops. There's an ending to it. It doesn't go on forever. It doesn't repeat. To change a terminating decimal to a fraction, we're going to put the digits over the ending place value and reduce. Now, I've got listed here your place values. So you've got your whole numbers, right? And then your decimal. After that, it's tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, and so on. If you have trouble remembering what goes where, here's how I think of it. If I'm one place past the decimal, then I need one zero. That's my tenth spot. If I'm two places past, then I need two zeros. That's why it's the hundredths. Three places past, you need three zeros, thousandths, and so on. That helps me remember or helped me remember when I was young, when I was a seventh grader. So perhaps that will help you as well. So let's actually get into some of these problems. My first one says 0 0.58 or 58 hundredths is how you really read that. I don't have anything in front of the decimal other than a 0, so I don't need to put a whole number in front of my fraction. I'm going to put the 58 on top. That's going to become the numerator. On the bottom, that was one two spots past, so I need two zeros. That's my hundredths place. And then you know your answer is never complete on fractions unless you reduce, right? If you're not sure what goes into both, look for the obvious. Look to see if they're even. If they end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then you can divide them by 2. If they end in, um, if they both end in zeros, divide by 10. If they end in 5 or 0, divide by 5. Start with those, and then you can keep going on and narrowing it down further if you need to. I know already that. 58 and 100 are even, so if nothing else, I know 2 goes into them. If I divide them both by 2, I get 29 over 50. Those two have nothing in common. Even though 50 is not a prime number, as a pair, 29 and 50 are called relatively prime. It means there's nothing other than 1 that you can divide them both by. That's how I know it's reduced as far as it goes. It's in simplest form. Let's look at the one below that. I have a 3 before the decimal, so I'm going to put a 3 before my fraction. Now, on top of the fraction, yes, I have 009, but in real life, you wouldn't say, I have 009 dollars. You'd sound like a big goober, right? You would just say 9. So I'm just going to put the 9 on top. On the bottom, though, even though I only wrote one number, that was really three places past the decimal, so that needs three zeros that goes in your thousandth spot. That one doesn't reduce. Three and nine thousandths. The next one, if you have a negative before, you keep a negative before. So this one, I'm going to put negative 12 and then my fraction bar. On top, I'm going to put the six. That was one place past the decimal, so I need one zero. I put a 10 on the bottom. When I reduce, it's not going to affect the negative 12. Even though, yes, I could divide that by 2 along with the 6 and 10, when you reduce, it only affects the fraction. So this is still just negative 12. And then 6 and 10, I'm going to divide them both by 2, and I get 3 fifths. Negative 12 and 3 fifths. Last one on this page. I have a zero before the decimal, so I'm not going to put a number before my fraction. On top, here's another one where you've got a zero in there that you don't really need to write. I wouldn't say I have zero $28. I would just say 28. So I'm going to put 28 for the numerator. On the bottom, though, that's three places past the decimal, so I need three zeros. So I'm going to put a thousand on the bottom. Now, I know that their greatest common factor, the biggest number that I can divide them both by is 4, 
But if you're not sure, then divide by two, you'll get 14 over 50. Those are even. Divide by two again. So we'll get there in the end, regardless of whether you divide by four or by two and then two a second time. You should end up with seven over 25. That was when you had terminating decimals, right? So on these, they're not terminating anymore. They are repeating. A repeating decimal keeps the same pattern, but that pattern goes again and again and again. Let me show you the real way that you would do this. Okay. If I have like, and we'll say 0 0.5 repeating. I wouldn't stress over this or write this down yet. Just, just watch. Bear with me for a second. In real life, the long process, I'm going to let that be considered X. And I want to move my decimal to get it past that repeating place. I need to move it one time. So I'm going to put one zero and I'm going to put 10X because 10 times X moves at one time. Moving it once, now I have a five before, but I still have all those repeating fives after. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract. I'm going to take the 10X that equals 5.5 repeating, and I'm going to subtract the X, which was just 0.5 repeating. When I do that, the 0.5 repeating part subtracts out of there. It's gone. On the left, that leaves me with 9Xs equals 5. To solve for X, the opposite of multiplying by 9 is dividing by 9. So I end up with X equals 5 ninths. Check it. Pick up a calculator. Put in 5 divided by 9. You're going to get 0.5 repeating. But wasn't that gross? That was just yuck. I don't want to go through that every time. I'm doubting you want to do that either. So let me give you a shortcut. On this shortcut, it only works when everything after the decimal is part of that repeating pattern. But for your seventh grade standards, those are the only kinds that you're going to see. So why not just do it the fast way? Ready? On this first problem here, I have a three that comes before the decimal. I'm going to keep the three before the fraction. In the end of that long one that I showed you, I ended up with a nine on the bottom right? So instead of putting multiples of 10 for those place values on the bottom, you're going to put groups of nine. If you have one number in the repeating pattern, like this six, you put one nine on the bottom. Then I can reduce. Divide six and nine by three, and I get three and two thirds. You can check it. We're going to do more of these here in a minute, but to check it, take your top divided by your bottom. Pick up a calculator, punch in 2 divided by 3, it's going to give you 0. 0.666666. So 3 and 2 thirds. Some of these you'll start to memorize too. Like 6 repeating is a really common one. 3 repeating, those you'll just start to learn right away what they are. Let's look at the next one. I don't have a number other than 0 before the decimal, so I don't need a number before my fraction. I'm just going to go straight after the decimal here and focus on that 21 for my numerator. Now, on the bottom, I had two numbers that were in that repeating pattern, right? Two digits repeated. So two nines go on the bottom. Make that 99. Reduce, you can divide both of those by threes, and you end up with 7 over 33. Let's do one more. In this third example, I have a negative before the zero, so I'm going to keep the negative before the fraction. Now, on top, it's 0, 3, 5, right? But here's another one of those examples where in real life, you would never say you have 0, 35 something. You would just say 35. So I'm going to put 35 on top. But on the bottom, even though I wrote two numbers, it was really three numbers in this repeating pattern. So I need three nines on the bottom, 999. And that does not reduce. So we're going to leave them just like that. Okay, so that's changing decimals to fractions. 
changing fractions to decimals. I probably should have done this one first because it's actually way easier. A lot of times we see fractions and we automatically kind of freak out and think, eh, I don't want to do this, but it's so easy, especially if you're able to use a calculator. Now I'm going to show you both with and without. In my classes, um, I like to just focus on not so much the computation with the numbers, but what you do with the information in the problem. Really by seventh grade, you should have already learned how to do your multiplication and your long division and all that stuff. I shouldn't have to always be teaching those concepts. I should be teaching one step past that. Now that you know how to do that, what can we do with that idea? So what I'm getting at is I use calculators with my students in my class. But if you're watching this video and you're not one of my students, just in case, I'm going to show you without the calculator as well, okay? So what you want to do is take top divided by bottom. With a calculator, top goes in first. If you're in a race and you come out on top, that means you won, right? You came in first place. So top goes in first. Seven divided by 10 will give you your answer. If you need to write it out, or, you know, if you're doing the, in Indiana, we take the I learn at the end of the year, it used to be called I step. Some of these end up on the no calculator problems. So you never know. You're going to take the top number and put that inside. I'm going to add a decimal, bring it straight up and lock it in and put a zero next to it. 10 goes into 70 seven times. So I get 0.7 or 0.7. That one really, if you read your fraction, if you said it out loud, it gives you your answer. Seven tenths, tenth, that's one of your decimal place values. So seven tenths, it just put the seven in that place, 0. 0.7. Okay, let's look at the next one. With the calculator, put in the top number first, five divided by eight. Without a calculator, top number goes inside, bottom number goes outside. I'm going to add a decimal, bring it straight up, add a zero. Eight will go into 56 times. That gives me 48. Subtract, I get a two. You can't have remainders with decimals. So I'm going to add another zero and bring it down. Eight goes into 22 times. That's 16. Subtract, I get a four. Again, we don't want a remainder. So add a zero, bring it down. Eight goes into 40 five times. So 0 0.625 or just 0 0.625. Okay. On the next one, I have a negative two before the fraction. So I need to put a negative two before the decimal. Three fifths. Here's a different way you can think about this one that I didn't show you on that seven tenths. I talked on the seven tenths about how that's one of your place values, right? Well, on the three fifths, five isn't a place value, but five goes into a place value, right? I know three over five is the same as times two times two, six over 10. Six tenths, again, just write it as you're reading it. Six tenths looks like that. Or three divided by five gives you 0.6. Or five on the outside, three on the inside, add a decimal and a zero. Five goes into 36 times. Regardless of which method you use, you get negative 2.6. If you want, this might be a good time to pause the video. See what happens when you try 9 and 7 over 40. 40 is not going to go into one of those multiples of 10 for your place values. So that shortcut won't work. But you can either pick up a calculator or you can do long division either way. So hit pause and then check back here with me and we'll see if we match. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you gave it a shot. I've got a nine before the fraction. So I'm going to have a nine before my decimal. In your calculator, you're going to put the top in first. So seven divided by 40. If you need to do it with long division, the seven's going to go inside. 40 is going to go outside. Add a decimal, bring it up, add a zero. 40 goes into 71 time. That would be 40. Subtract, I get 30. Add another zero, bring it down. I know four goes into 37 times. Four times seven would be 28. So 40 times seven would be 280. I'm going to subtract and I get 20. Add another zero, 
bring it down. Four goes into 25 times. So 40 times five would be 200. You should get 9.175 for that one. If when you divide your decimal repeats, don't write it forever and then put your, you know, three little dots to show that it keeps going. What you want to do is write that repeating portion one time and put a bar over the repeating pattern. So one third, this is one that you're going to start to memorize because you, this is a really common one that you see a lot, just like two thirds. But if you put in your calculator one divided by three, you're going to get 0.3333333. It drives me nuts when people, for some reason, put 0.33 and a bar over the 33. While, yes, it is 33 over and over and over, isn't a 33 just a 3 over and over? So don't write it that way. Really what's happening is you have one number in a repeating pattern, and that number repeats. So it's just 0.3 repeating or 0.3 repeating is the same thing. Now, what I want to show you on the one below it, we already know that the one third is 0.3 repeating. You can only put a repeating bar on things that come after the decimal. So what I've seen sometimes with my seventh graders is they'll say, well, it's a three that repeats, so we'll just do that. Or they'll put 3.3 .3 and they'll write it like that. Your repeating bar only goes on things that come after the decimal. So this is just a normal 3.3 3 repeating. Okay. Negative 5 and 1, 6. Well, I've got a negative 5 before the fraction. So I'm going to have a negative 5 before the decimal. If you've got a calculator handy, that's fine. If you want to do long division, like I showed you on the page before, that's fine too. But you're going to take 1 divided by 6. Now my calculator, check this out, says so point 0.1, it's got a whole bunch of sixes, and it's got a seven at the end. That seven's not really there. Calculators, most calculators, will round so that the number fits within its calculator window. There's not really a seven. If the next number's a six, it tells the six before it to round up, right? That's where the seven came from. So really what we have is a one and then a six that goes on forever. The repeating bar just goes right over the six. Do not put a seven at the end. There's not really a seven there. That's just the calculator rounding to make it all fit within its viewing window. Last one here. I have a six before the fraction, so I'm going to have a six before the decimal. Now if you do eight divided by nine and calculator, Again, what's going to happen is you're going to get a different number at the end. It's going to give you 0 0.8888888 and then a 9 at the end. But the 9's not really there. It's just rounding it to make it fit. Really, it's just an 8 that goes on forever. Now, the last thing I want to show you isn't always part of this section in the math books, but sometimes they'll assume you already know this and they'll throw in a problem here or there, or, you know, they'll have you compare fractions and decimals and you have to decide what's bigger, or what's smaller, and they'll throw a percent in there. So I just wanted to very quickly show you how to change a decimal to a percent. To change a decimal to the percent, we're going to pick up the decimal point and move it to the right. Percent literally means out of 100. You've even got a one and two zeros within that that you could rearrange to make it look like 100, right? 100 with its two zeros is always about moving two times. To make it a percent, I'm going to move towards the right because that's where my percent sign is going to go. So I'm going to pick up my decimal and scoot, scoot to the right and call that 76%. If I had been given the percent and I needed to go the other way, then I would scoot, scoot away from the percent sign because I'm getting rid of it. So scoot, scoot to the left. That's why it would give me the 70, 0.76. Okay, the one below it, I'm going to scoot, scoot to the right. Don't put 0, 0, 0, 4. That looks silly. It's just 2.4%. That was a very small decimal, so it's a very small percent. 
The next one is over a whole number. So it's going to be over 100%. 100% is the whole thing. So three of something means it's going to be over 300%. So I'm going to scoot, scoot. This becomes 328%. Again, if I needed to go the other way, I would start at the end. My decimal would be hiding here at the end. Scoot, scoot away from the percent sign, and I end up with that 3.28. Just a couple more. On 0 0.005, that's a really small decimal. So when I scoot, scoot, I end up with a really small percent. It doesn't have to always go to the end. This one would just be 0.5%. Now, the last one. I tried to trick you here. I gave you a fraction. If you don't already know, three-fourths, it's 0.75. Top divided by bottom gives you 0.75. So what we want to do first is make this 2.75. And then scoot, scoot, that's going to be 275%. You may not be an expert yet, but hopefully that at least gives you a good start into this lesson which is a good start into the whole unit of fractions and decimals. Um, if you need more help, look me up on my classroom Facebook page or there's my school email. Um, my students, please don't ever be afraid to ask me for help. Even if it just means leaving a comment on this video, I'm happy to help however I can. Everyone else, if you're not one of my students, but you happen to cross this video somehow, um, I do have a face or a Facebook. Listen to me. I do have a YouTube channel, Math with Luker. Um, feel free to check it out. Hopefully there's some other good seventh grade math content that will help you out in the future. Thanks so much. Bye.